A word from Jesus is all you need to read again, to leave again. Chains are broken, God is revealed. Raising leaders to transform the world. City, the place to be. We worship. We worship. We with everything in our being. With everything in my heart. I bless you. My king. My savior. My master. My lord. I bow before your throne today. Again. We thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for bringing your kingdom to the earth. Planting it first in our lives, in our hearts. Setting your throne in our hearts. And then planting it in our midst. Planting it in this place. In Pohakot City. Thank you for establishing your council. Thank you for unveiling your plans. Unveiling your heart to us. Thank you for placing your hand upon our lives and blessing us. Thank you for granting us favor in your sight. Thank you for choosing us to be partners with you in implementing your end time program. Thank you for entrusting us with such holy calling. Thank you for revealing to us the mysteries of your covenant and the mysteries of your will. Everybody lift up your hands and just bless him. You are chosen. You are favored. You are handpicked by heaven to be part of God's end time move. What an honor. What a privilege. We honor you. We honor you. I found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. God searched, God searched and found you. We honor 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 you. We pledge our loyalty. We pledge till this life is over, even in eternity. Not only that, you will always be my God, you will always be my master, you will always be my savior. And my whole life and all that I have and everything I bow at before your throne and it will always be at your service my children will serve you they don't have any option they don't have any other God I covenant them to you I covenant my whole lineage to you spiritual and natural like Joshua the great said I am my house we will serve the Lord other people can choose who they want to serve you are a faithful God. You are a merciful God. You are a good God. You are kind. You are large-hearted. You are generous. Help us to be like you. Help me to be a reflection of who you are. You are a father God. I bless your holy name. I honor you. Let your kingdom come even this morning perfect what you have started establish your counsel don't just reveal it establish it in our lives and Lord reveal to us your covenant and the mysteries of your will and impart us the capacity to walk in it we will struggle to do your will this year because there is grace upon our lives we give you praise just lift your hands and bless it you are not going to walk in the flesh you're not going to struggle there is grace i said there is grace to do whatever god has called you to do grace is divine enablement is god's ability working in you giving you divine capability it gives you ability where you lack it are you hearing what i'm saying stop worrying about what you are not able to do in yourself is god at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure 
You say, I need help in my prayer life. Grace is coming upon you for that. He said, I need help in my giving life. Grace is coming upon you for that. I need grace for church growth. That grace has come upon you this morning. I need grace to function in healings and miracles. Receive that grace. It's come upon you this morning. There is no more struggle. When revival comes, struggle ends. Because you flow in the wind of the Spirit. You are carried by the power of the Spirit. Grace is supernatural enablement. Grace is not just favor or merited favor. It's supernatural capacity, supernatural enablement. Grace is God doing for you what you could not do for yourself. That's why grace is not a license to sin. Because if I'm weak, there is enablement to live holy. If I'm the type that gets defeated, there is now enablement to be victorious. There is power to live above sin. There is power to triumph over your enemies. Lift up your hands. All of the manifold grace of God in its diverse forms, they will begin to function in your life now. There is grace for marriage. There is grace for business, exploits. There is grace for ministry. It's called pastoring without sweat. Taking my yoke upon you, the one that is easy. He said, my yoke is easy. My body is light. If it's too heavy, you are carrying it. No, 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 no. You are doing it by your own power. You need to tap into the G factor. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Somebody said to me, I don't understand. I've known you for 20 something years. How do you stay fresh like this and all that? That's what eagles are known for. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not faint. I can add, they can fly and not get tired. Because they don't flap, they soar. The wind carries them. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? They are not using natural strength. They are riding on the wings of grace. Lift up your hands. Any area of your life where you feel deficient, ask God for grace for it. Grace to take care of your husband. Grace to raise your children. Grace to marry that your wife. Grace for music ministry. Grace to pastor leaders. Agabales, whatever you lack is being imparted. Whatever you lack, the hand of God is bringing it into your life. Grace for holy living. The appetite for sin dies in your life. That bondage to sin breaks. Remake miracle works. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make a miracle of promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make a miracle of promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Greet somebody and tell him you are in a new season. Bless somebody. Tell him have an anointed handshake. Oh, Habat. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Gibayobo. Magalobos. Eh. Imagilegos. 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 My God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are He, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in this place. I worship.
worship you. I worship you. We made a miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Why is it that just lift up one hand and say those things to her? We make a miracle walker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hey, we make a miracle walker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a we make a. Miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Even when I'm sleeping, my spirit is worshiping, is amazing. You're going home with your cup overflowing. Yeah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of Jesus. When the ark comes to your city, keep it. That's one of the mark of the Davids. They always seek God's ark. They are men of God's presence. I'll talk to you this morning about the Davidic covenant and the anointing that go along with it. There are three dimensions to the dominion mandate and I just want to draw it. I'm using a triangle because it's one mandate but here is J which is Judah. So even though I call it Davidic is the mandate of the Davidic mandate and mantle. Here is L. L is Levi. That is the Levitical or the priestly mandate. We are called to raise kings and priests. But here is J. Is the Joseph's. Is the marketplace mandate okay should i call it the joseph mandate marketplace this is about raising career professional businessmen technologists people in entertainment industry the seven sphere mandate that's that part we sometimes call it the transformational mandate we use that language here a lot. The Joseph wear coats of many colors. The seven colors of rainbow. So some business, some education, some social services. And the Joseph mandate can also lead to politics. Joseph was on the throne for 80 years. He started at the age of 30 first 40 years prime minister to pharaoh read the patriarchs you will see what i'm saying then pharaoh died when joseph was 70. instead of putting his son as the next pharaoh he called the elders of egypt and said you can see what this hebrew man has brought to our people let him take my place let my son take the position of prime minister next to him and that's actually what happened and Joseph ruled Egypt for 40 years. He ruled 40 years as prime minister and ruled 40 years completely in charge of all Egypt with Pharaoh's son beside him and brought mind boggling. So you see the Joseph too, one of the seven colors is government, is politics. But the Davidic mandate is total dominion. I will show you because I'm discussing that now. You will see the difference between that and all the other ones. The people that are David are not Joseph so professional. They combine the spiritual and natural 
dominion in both in the spiritual and in the physical realm. They combine it. The man is both priest and king. And even a prophet. And then, like I always say, this Davidic is apostolic. This one is priestly or pastoral. This one is marketplace. The Joseph is marketplace. So our professionals. But you know, there is one thing, and I want to say this just before. The Davidic mantle is generational. It can be tapped into, if you understand what we are teaching you. The priestly mantle is generational. You are born of a priest, you get it. But you have to operate those laws. The Joseph mantle is also generational. But there is something, an office I occupy here, I have checked my whole Bible. I have never seen where it's generational, it's a prophetic. You guys might not know, but that's probably what has given me one of the greatest advantages in God. I can't explain that to you. Because the issue about knowing the mind of God is utmost for me. Doing is good. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded 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 his present continued proceeded 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 you know what is proceeded just look at a tap that is running that water you fetch has fresh one is coming glory be to the name of jesus so there is a covenant of priesthood but there is a covenant of dominion a Davidic covenant. That's the one I want to discuss with you. As per the prophetic, read your Bible, it's honored that gets it to anybody. So an inheritance. So an inheritance. Usually that combined with the apostolic is what will also set some sons apart from other sons who get the general thing. Are you people hearing what I'm saying? Because even in the blessing of sons, sons and inheritance of sons, there's a right of the firstborn. There are special anointings. There are seven new anointings that are on the earth now. They are released to come and help the church get the end time mission accomplished. In the prophetic realm, and I know God has brought me into that. <laughs> in the prophetic, there is the the mantle of Enoch. That mantle is what people call the spirit of Elijah. You had a prophecy, and someone was reading a prophecy, the, the day I asked for three, whatever. That's what they call the spirit of Elijah. But it has consecrations that go along with it, if you want it. Now, one of those anointing, the Davidic mantle, is here on the earth. Because we're now in the kingdom age. We're now in the kingdom age. A few men have functioned near such levels in the body. Few men. And they usually stand out. If you look at people like Dahosa, like Bishop Oyedepo, a few men have just ventured into that territory. And they usually stand out. They stand out in the body. It's like the rest. Because it's a kingly anointing. It's anointing for dominion. Is anointing for breakthroughs. Doesn't matter what it is, the walls of Jericho, it brings it down. That's the kind of thing people like Joshua carry. Now, I showed you yesterday, so you can see, it was even on Jacob, it was even on Abraham. And now, it didn't start with David. But in the days of David, David took it to the level of making it a covenant. So that people can tap it into it in mass. That's what God has asked me to do for you guys in this conference. He established it as a covenant. At that moment, people can tap into it. So a generation of mighty men, a lot of ordinary people, discontented people, people that are failures, that were struggling in life, tapped into this thing and they fell on them and he created mighty men. That thing Judah was doing became, it was actually rare 
if you trace from Adam all the way to Abraham, sometimes you find only one person in a generation that you carry, sometimes nobody at all. Jesus, by his death on the cross, has paved the way now for many sons to be taken back to glory. One of the things he died for, like Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 was making clear, is to take many sons back to dominion, to take many sons back to glory. I have wondered why that place never said all sons. Why is he many? Check verse 9 and 10, Hebrews 2. We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. That's the original thing man had before he fell. When he created man, he crowned him with glory and honor. That's how dominion was conferred. We see Jesus crowned with glory and honor that by the grace of God he should test death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. Reversing what Adam lost to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. I used to wonder why not all sons? Why many? Because the secret is the principles of sonship. I don't know why. Why should what is available to everybody and some people are not having it? There is a revelation behind the mystery. You just have to do what he did. You have to have this mind in you that was in Christ. You have to follow that example. In sonship, nothing else. Another thing that can stop a son from operating in that is failure to grow. The absence of discipleship. Because an heir, as long as it's a child, it's not different from a servant. There is no circumventing discipleship. There is no circumvent. There is no short. You can't. God is not going to carry dominion and give a baby. You don't give babies guns. You don't give them atomic bombs. You don't carry a baby and put in a jet bomb and tell him fly off. He's going to crash. Those are the only two things. You see, sonship and discipleship. Discipleship and sonship is an ordinance for the whole ministry every year. That's where the secret is hidden. I ask the Lord, why many so it's also he paid it, he takes that debt for all men. He has reversed what I done lost and given us back. Why not all sons? Galatians 4, 1 to 4, explains that if a son fails to be tutored and mentored and groomed, discipled, he, he will not step into his inheritance. I said that an heir, as long as he's a child, is not different from a servant, though he be lord of all. It's his inheritance. But he's under tutors and governance until the time appointed of the father. If he fails to be tutored, you don't give birth to a child now and hand him the company. You don't even give birth to a child and hand him your Range Rover car. This is inheritance. He can't get it. He has to grow up. The second thing after discipleship is sonship. That's what we have. God has revealed his secrets to you guys. The secrets of his kingdom. Jesus said, John 15, 15. I call you no longer servants. I call you friends. Why? Because the secrets, the things I've learned from my father, I've made them known to you. If you fail now, you are the one that is stopping yourself. Hence what I call you, not servant. For servants knowing not what his master do it. But I've called you friends. For all the things that I've heard of my father, I've made known to you. The things that can make you friends of God. The things that can make you songs have been given to you, my friend. Please, those tapes, those tapes, treasure them. You know, we've been to Anambra, we've been to Abuja, we are here in Port Harcourt, and Holy Ghost Congress will complete the cycle. Please, those tapes, treasure them more than anything that you have ever learned. I'm the center of your It's you that I see. Yes, 
seven major covenants in scripture. In life, there are more. Yes. The first scripture is the one that gave man dominion. The first covenant is the one that gave man dominion in Eden. The Adamic covenant. Some people call it Edenic covenant. What you need to understand is that God builds everything by covenant. Let me give you an example. Jeremiah 33, from verse 20. Because what covenant does is to bring stability. And whatever that is established by covenant is now constant. It doesn't fail. Look at it. Thus said the Lord, if you can break my covenant of day and covenant of night. You see? So, do you know why every morning, with guarantee, the morning breaks the sun rises because these things after creating them he established a covenant in creation actually the book of enoch showed that there's an oath god uses to sustain creation he calls it the oath of becca he put a covenant into motion that keeps these things in their place that is why you don't need to be a prophet to predict that winter will come december january in europe and hamata will come here you don't need to be a prophet to predict by March, April, whatever rainy season we have started here in Africa. See? There is a covenant that sustains, that guarantees day and night. So with that, there is no failure. And it's not just day and night. Every aspect of creation. Look at women. 28 days, some 30 or whatever, the cycle comes back. 
But you will see that there is an age you get to, that thing will stop and then aging will start. Menopause, once it stops, it kicks in aging at alarming rates. And that's what some people have learned now how to slow it down by taking in some hormonal treatment. Because it's those hormones that have stopped pumping. So, as handsome as you're looking now, they say covenant in creation. As years are passing, old age is approaching. The clock is ticking. You better believe it. With all your Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost can break covenant. Highest, what you can do, you can slow the process down. <laughs> With your diet and exercise. Or not. If my covenant of day or that of night can be broken, that the day and night will not show up in their season. If you can do that, you can suspend the seasons. Watch the next verse. Then also my covenant may be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign over his throne. And then another covenant is with the Levites. There is a priesthood covenant that ministered to me. So he talks about two covenants here. The one that empowers people with dominion and the other one that empowers people with ministry <laughs> you can't just be an ordinary man of god blowing hot you know he said you shall be baptized with holy ghost and fire your own is lemon juice <laughs> nothing no nothing they show it's like a native doctor they think no they work how do you expect that church to go anywhere enter into a priesthood covenant your priesthood makes sense when you throw the thing, the thing will work. People will know that this one, he knows what he's doing. Can I hear you say amen? You know those babas that when they throw their dice, eh, the gods talk. Not a blind priest. Is that covenant that now keeps God connected? God doesn't answer your prayer anytime He likes. There is an obligation to confirm the words of His servants and to perform what? The counsel of His messengers. The priest and the deity He is representing has covenant. So when you come before the priest, you have come before the deity. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Dominion is not something that just falls in anybody. It's a contract. It's a spiritual contract. So Adam broke it in Eden. God came and put another covenant attaching to that original one. And what he put now is that a seed that will come out of your loins will bring restoration. It will bruise the head of the serpent. The serpent will bruise his heel. That means he will die. The poison of the serpent will get in. And in that is sin. You know, he's going to be our sin and die for it, but he will redeem man from Satan's dominion. So he added that to fix what Adam broke. And that's what finally came to pass in Christ. That's the first, you know, the Denny covenant. There, there was another covenant that came after mankind went haywire. The watchers came, you know, and then God destroyed the world with a flood. So when Noah and his sons came out of the ark, Noah provoked that by what he offered to God. Let nobody confuse you about giving. It's not a new thing. This thing is an ancient ordinance. There is somebody that suffered a flood. Your house is wiped, farmland wiped, animals dead, but you were able to save a few things. Will you want to start by offering sacrifice? No. That's why God valued it. Jeremiah 33. One of the things that this covenant guarantees David, you see, that's why, you see, Dominion City. It's indestructible. It doesn't matter what anybody is doing. There's something here that is raising souls. Let me give you a, a secret. The Lord came to me one time. There were some things he was explaining to me. He said, you are working with me. We are partners. Stop worrying about some things. I have your back. He said, what you and I are operating. He said, covenant. Then he made some references to me. He said, you see like Febe the hustle. Doesn't matter how you look at him. There's something I made with his fathers that is working for him. 
He said, you see, Joel Austin, it doesn't matter what people say. It's a contract I made with his father that is working. He said, watch, learn this about me. The Lord was talking to me. When I and the man contract, I'm faithful to his descendants to a thousand generations. I don't think you heard me. You see, Abraham, this is like the Jewish nation. Why that nation cannot be destroyed? It's because of what the contract signed between me and Abraham. Sometimes you see them misbehaving, but another person that joins them to do some of those things will get himself into deep waters. I don't think you're hearing me. He said, that's the oath I've given you. But he said, train your children in how to walk in this thing. So they will maximize the open check I've given to this ministry. Some of these things I've explained to you are the greatest thing a father can do for his children. Because that's how you establish their destiny. It's no more a, a, a maybe. You know, there's something called consolidation or establishing a person. It's no more guesswork. You can have that knowing. You can actually enter into your rest. It's a contract behind what God took an oath over this thing that we are doing. And he's repeated that at certain times over the years. And he keeps shocking me. If Jesus that came by himself, he came first time when I was 12 years old. And I was explaining to him how that this is not possible. In my family, nobody has ever done this kind. And he showed, took me and showed me. He said, this is why you were born. Oh. Go and even ask your mother that he even made a call. He donated you because he was having some issues. I said, okay, am I now here because you donated me? He said, no, that's why you are created. So sometimes a penina is allowed by God to turn Hannah into an intercessor. Because what is really happening is that Hannah is crying, he needs a child, she's barren, but God needs a prophet. There's a problem in the kingdom. The sons of Eli have backslidden. Eli is old. The one that knows something is old. His sons that should have replaced him are messing up. So God is in need of a prophet. So what he did was allow his situation on earth. And so Hannah was barren. I told you, all undeserved suffering have redemptive value. And if the suffering is deserved, it has conversion value. Pull the lessons in it. Use it to move your life forward. And then use all those things to help people. You have a message that is rare. If you can, because what people do, they go through things. Even if it's your failure, there are treasures that can come out of it. Get rid of it. Stop misbehaving. That's the only way you can destroy it. And then turn it into a weapon to use it to help people. Because there are a lot of people going through the same thing, but they are sitting on it. Everyone is just looking fine. If you fight cancer, conquer it. And then take a ministry of helping people with cancer. You will see how wealthy and how influential you become. Everything you've been through it. It's a ministry and it's a message. Anyway, Penina, the one that had everything, all children, was now tormenting her. And of course, she would cry, cry, run, you know, go to husband, through. Oh, no, you know, what they are telling you, run to God, intercess, or go and make a deal with God. Because heaven is trying to bring something, but you are not getting it. If you've been through some trying times and last year was rough for you, some whatever. Hey, hey, my friend, you are a candidate for this new season. They're trying to push you so you can run back to the secret place. You've been trying church, it's not working, you've tried this, the thing is not growing. Eh? If it grows, you become useless. So now you can go and tap into an anointing. Tap into, become a voice. Become God's answer to your city. So that drove her to the altar where she went. She was pouring out her soul, crying to God. He lied. <laughs> I noticed. He said, you're a drunk woman. He said, no, 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 I'm a woman of sorrow. I have something that's keeping me on my knees. <laughs> something that's making me wake up every early morning to pray. Something that's making me some nights. I'm doing vigil. Something that's making me see God. <laughs> that has made the Lord God Almighty release that to you so the deal she made is god i have got it i'm sorry so all these years i have just been selfish absent only for myself not knowing that you have a need
That's covenant. Covenant must meet God's need and your need. If it's just me, you're off. What you're talking about is not a contract. Don't come to God and be talking only about you. Realize that he has something he wants to do. And you have something you want. Come to him and match the two. Okay, this financial anointing, I'm going to be pursuing contract. I want to be doing business with government. But Lord, the deal. Can't you see every time pastor is raising for I want to enter, he says, a planter. I'll go and build the building. I'll buy the land and build it. Take me to that level. That's how to make a deal with God. You have a need, God has a need. You need a short, God needs a prophet. Can two of you come together? That's why whatever is better through covenant meets God's need and meets your need. You see how two people come into covenant? A man and a woman. But they have things they bring that each other doesn't have. Because a man has the seed. He wants to bring his generation. But the woman has the womb. You don't plant seed on the ground and they grow. You plant crops. Human beings are not farmed. You know all these things are farming on? fish farm is in the water crops in the soil but human beings in the womb the womb is a soil where you plant a seed and nurture it into a human being after you give birth to them you want to grow leaders the new soil is a school leave those children roaming about the streets you have armed robbers and prostitutes so see the covenant now Woman, you have the womb. Man, you have the seed. Can we come together? So, I bring the seed. You capture it. You nurture it. A baby comes. Watch. The baby always bears the father's name. Eh? But that baby is always the woman's baby. Am I correct? Am I correct? Now watch. Oh. <laughs> it's something you all need to do. The command they give to the child is honor your father. And watch. Look at Jesus, who did the same thing with the father. Jesus, the father is his spirit. He doesn't have blood. He needs to save human beings. So Jesus agreed to come and get blood by being born. So he can give the father what he needs to redeem mankind. Because of that, he is giving a position that all men will honor the son just like they honor the father. Actually, he is the way to the father. Let me make it clear. When Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. He didn't say, I'm the way to heaven. He made it clear what the destination is. He said, I'm the way. No one comes to the Father. He didn't say no one comes to heaven. No one comes to the Father except what? By me. Of course, coming to the Father leads you to heaven. But here is what he's teaching. That Christianity is a relationship-based religion. It's not like other religions that gods are far. That God has broken the barrier between human beings and God. If you come through Christ, you will gain relationship. If you reject Christ, you will be calling on a God that is far. Like other religions on the earth. This is a religion that has love in it. That has family. That has acceptance. That you can know your heavenly father, the man that created you. As a father now, not just as a creator. No one comes to the Father except by me. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen my Father. If you have known me, you have known my Father also. What happened is that in partnership with God, they create that new creation, which is me. I'm a child of God, but I'm also a seed of Christ. I'm a son of my Father, but I'm also a son of my mom. For providing the womb, this is why when Abraham entered into covenant with God, God said, I need to get the Messiah into the earth. You are looking for a child? You want Isaac? No problem. I want Messiah. First, on our way to getting the Messiah, I need a holy nation. If I give you Isaac, can you give me a holy nation? And then through that, I'll get the Messiah into the earth. Abraham said, a deal. So you see, when God now says sacrifice Isaac, what he was saying is, I want to see if this man can really keep covenant. And he did it. God said, I have found the man finally since Adam disappointed me. So what he did for the first time, for the first time, 
God was willing to take the form of a human being. But when he came to earth, do you know what they call him? Seed of Abraham. Yet he is the son of God. Both Abraham and God now share. Hey. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? It's the same thing that made David. When he made the Davidic covenant, one of the purpose is to create a vehicle through which Jesus and his mission on earth will be accomplished, especially the dominion side. David was to give him a throne. When he returns to rule, it's the throne of David that he's going to be sitting on. David, you want to build me a house? Don't worry. Let's enter a covenant for your desire to build me a house. I'm going to do something. I'm going to enter a covenant with you. Part of that deal is that through you, a son will come who will build me the real house. When Solomon was born, like the case of Isaac, he built the physical temple. And when he was being dedicated, God said, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Do you know how big I am? How can anybody build me? What can contain me? He said, this house you built, I'm blessing it, I will use it, but it's just a shadow of the real house. That there is somebody coming through this lineage that will build me a house. One day he shows up, he was born of the lineage of David, the angel came, he was announcing it to Mary. He said, he's going to be called the seed of David. He's also going to be called the son of the highest. David and God are sharing a child. This is Jesus. And then he rises up, he said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against He said, because then it was temples made by hands. Now, it is temple made by no human hands. And that's the seed of David. So if you are looking at Davidic covenant, the peak in the person in whose life it peaked, exemplified the Buddhist dominant is Jesus Christ. Next to that is David and of course, you know, Solomon. But we remember, I've shown you the founder of that in Judah. So you know where this thing is flowing from. Founder of that family. So now, Jesus said, I have the keys of David. If I decree something, it happened. If I open a door, nobody can shut it. He said, I collected that authority. That is the first thing the covenant, that covenant, that covenant gives. It gives you a key of authority, the key of dominion. That's what he was also giving to the church. He said, on this, I will build my church and I will give you the keys. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose. So, I've shown you two men that did covenant with God. And they did marriage like a husband and wife. And then God was able to bring something. But that thing bears God's name. He's the son of God, but he's the seed of David. Why is he the seed of David? That's where he collected his dominion from. He's the son of God, but he's the seed of Abraham. Why is he the seed of Abraham? <laughs> That's how the Messiah has to come from Israel. Today they tell you if you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed. If Jesus was not it, we can't be it. The Jews get it by being born of Abraham natural. We get it by being born again through Christ. Judah, David, Solomon got it by being born natural from the tribe of Judah. You and I get it by being born spiritually. From Christ Lord. I worship you with all my love. With all my Seven covenants of the scripture. We have the Adamic, we have the Noatic covenant. When Noah provoked God with that sacrifice, God responded and gave the covenant of rainbow that water will not destroy the earth anymore. Then later, God found Abraham and did the Abrahamic covenant. And now, 
after that it was the the Davidic covenant if you want to go in the order the Levitical covenants came in first because under Moses the Levites got established but really during the time of Jacob both Levi and Judah got these offices established for them I don't want to get into that so the Davidic covenant then the Levitical covenant the priesthood covenant the day we get to talk about it you will see that even that one has been elevated through heavenly ministry not just the Levitical priest that minister to men on earth that we can enter the courts of heaven because we're given the order of Melchizedek the type of priesthood that Jesus has one please before you write the davidic and the priestly put the mosaic covenant that's that's in that order the abrahamic covenant then the mosaic covenant when they came out of egypt at the mount sinai at the foot of the mountain god established that covenant with the children of israel that gave them the ten commandments and all the laws the mosaic covenant is primarily for the jews but in it are revealed principles and secrets in types and shadow that will affect us in the new covenant because where they do animals we know it is jesus the lamb and his blood where they do incense in worship we know is real worship and so on they use a lot of types and shadows so we can learn how god deals with a corporate do a co corporate covenant with a people a people he has called out to himself why they came out of egypt we came out of the world why it was passover that gave them freedom and redemption from egypt it is jesus our passover lamb that gave us redemption why it is that when they came out they went through the red sea it means that after your salvation you go through baptism why is it that when they came out of the Red Sea, the glory crowd rested upon them? It means that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the next thing after water baptism. So it's very important. That's why they put it in the Bible. So we can study it and see the types and shadows. You know, what is types and shadows? In those days when they take pictures, you have the negative. Uh -huh. It's not clear yet. You, but you look at it, you can see yourself. And see the person that's now. Then they go and develop it. And the full picture comes out. New Testament is that Old Testament developed. But Old Testament is the, the shadow, negative, the picture that is not yet developed. It's important. You don't throw it away, you learn from it. Look at on Mount Sinai, the fire of God descended on Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came down with clothing tongues as a fire. At that Mount Sinai, which happened also 50 days, that's the day of Pentecost. 3,000 people died. Because when Moses came down, they broken the law. 3,000 people died. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people were saved. It's no coincidence. On Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments came down and they were given. On the day of Pentecost, the Great Commission was given to go to the whole world. That's what the book of Hebrews was doing to compare so that we will get the wealth in it and convert it so usually i hear people they say it's all covenant no 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 it's only mosaic covenant that you can talk about like that 
you can see Abrahamic covenant and all his world was brought into the new covenant, which is the seven, the last, and the seven is the new covenant. And what God did with the new covenant is, he went to Adamic covenant and brought the dominion that mankind lost. Brought back glory and honor to human beings. He went to the Abrahamic covenant and brought back the wealth of it. You Abraham said, an earth according to the promise. He went to the Davidic covenant and brought dominion. He even went to the Levitical covenant and gave us priesthood, but they elevated it to a higher order. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Then he went to even the Mosaic covenant, you call the old covenant, and now took all the types and shadowed and developed them for us so we can see the pattern for everything we're going to do and live. So the new covenant now became the wealthiest, the wealthiest covenant ever. Look at the Davidic covenant. Second Samuel chapter 7 from verse 1. See how it was provoked. He's always a human being. He's always a human being. He's always a human being. You can see that there are one or two that God initiated directly. It came to pass that when David sat in his house, the Lord has given him rest round about from all his enemies. Verse 2. That the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of God dwell within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. Now, what is the issue? How did you provoke? Because I told you, if you're going to learn sonship, you must begin with God. How to learn to honor God. How did you provoke heaven? A desire to build God a house. Write it down. The number one element in the Davidic covenant is that thing to build God a house. Like Jesus, you want to see the church built. If you don't have heart for the kingdom, forget about this thing. It won't work for you. First, the church. Because that's another mistake some people make. They diminish the kingdom. They play down the church, make the church talk about society, society. The Davidic covenant also builds society, but that's further. It starts with the house of God. How many of you want to see the house of God built and established all over the nation? How many of you? This is the first thing. A heart for God's house is the first thing that makes you a candidate for this. I'm going to show you the elements now that bring this to human beings. And I want to show you how I even got here. It's true I was born to do that. But there were things <laughs> that began to rise in my heart. I cry. Those days in Enugu, the issue of South East became a sleepless night issue for me. I cried for many days. I went after fathers trying to help lift them. You know, I checked the story and saw people like Apostle Mba. He said, from today, there is something God gave me I have not been able to give it to any human being. He said, you heard that what God did with us. He said, that thing was given to me by piety. I'm handing it over to you. He said, I don't know who taught you this thing you did. I don't know how you learned honor. I don't know who. He said, it's a rod. Piety handed to you. That was handed to him. Handed to him. He mentioned it. He said, I'm handing it over to you. Is everywhere. Eastern Nigeria will bow to you. Now, you know, I can't explain these things. I can't explain. <laughs> he said, in Paeltis lineage, that's where you belong. And you are in third in line. It was after that I now said, okay. I now went after. So I studying all his children. And then, you know, Papa Idahosa became my... Then he said, if you can just do this one thing, God will give you what he has not been able to give anybody around here. I said, what is it? He said, be patriotic for God's kingdom, not just your church. Ask God to enlarge your heart so much. And you know, with a lot of crying and tears, pray those things you don't know, but that was it. Because the second journey is my encounter with Papa. That, was, well, that is it. We did not fall from heaven. This thing is handed down. It's apostolic succession. 
It's apostolic succession. It's apostolic succession. Because you see, when he spoke to me, he gave me mandate for Eastern Nigeria. When I got Papa, it was national and global mandate. That's how all the boundaries collapsed. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I'm revealing a lot of secrets here. But that's God wants it. In the Davidic lineage, we never dishonor fathers. We never break covenant with fathers. You will see why. It's a covenant of sonship that drives that thing. Anybody that violates it, fell out of. It's him that did it to himself. The king said to him, go and do it. Go and build God a house. <laughs> Whenever people read this, what they don't know is that this house he's talking about building is the second time he's building. The one where the ark is, he's the one that built it. The ark of God has lived in two tents. The first one was built by Moses. The second one was built by David. So when you read Amos 9, in the last days, I will restore the tabernacle of David. There is a tabernacle that David actually built for God. It was after he erected it, then he asked. You remember when David brought the ark of God back to the city of David? That's what happened. So that's his concern. Now I built a real house for myself. How can I, the small boy, though they made me king, be living in this house and God, his ark, is living in tents? And that's what got God's attention. So this is how this boy is thinking. Let me bring him and give him a contract. Let me elevate him to a covenant level. You see, God is looking for men in the midst of many people. May the secret be revealed to you today. Verse 4. That night, when the prophet came to sleep, Tell about that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, Go tell David myself. This is what you will tell him. Thus said the Lord, <laughs> Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? So you are thinking like this. Everybody write it down. First, I'm going to build a building. I will also help advance the kingdom and help build the church. I will build God a church. That's what even on Basanjo, as you people see that man. Let me tell you two things about him. One, it's a communical center in Abuja. He finishes that building with him. You go to his other farm now. He built a massive church. Every Sunday, free food. Thousands of people know. Poor people know. They can come on and take food home. You will wonder why he's the longest living president, why God has given him. And you notice, anytime he sanctions a person, because a Davidic thing affects... Yes, yes. The people that have it are not perfect people, though, but you can't do anything about it. If I tell you more stories about him, a group of Methodist missionaries came to, you know, um, their place in Abiyokuta. And the father joins the church. And then they were preaching. They didn't have equipment to preach. So his father decided to go and take loan to help the preachers have the tools for preaching. So he borrowed those things and he gave them. And so when he was not able to pay, the creditors now came and said, since you don't have anything valuable can seize or sell, give us one of your children that will come and serve for two years. His service will not cancel your loan. He'll talk to this one. He said, no way. You want to send me to be a slave? This one, no way. This one, no way. Obasan Job volunteered himself. He said, as long as it's God, that these people are men of God that came to preach. Let me go and serve. So he wasted two years of his life. When he finished, the missionaries now blessed him. Two years of his life. Two-time president. And in each of the case, he doesn't go for it. He doesn't spend his money. Nigeria got out of debt. A lot of things happened. He's not perfect, though. You see him sometimes, he's talking like this, do like this. Everyone said, David covenant. Hmm. I just hope you get this thing. How many of you are getting it? Oh. 
Say, I'm going to build God a house. This one is not, this one is not more an issue. Me. It's now something in me, in my heart. And then, not only that, there is a second element of a Davidic covenant. Can I show you that one quickly? A Davidic covenant seeks to bring back the ark. A Davidic covenant, everybody that carried it is a person of God's presence. They are God's chasers. If revival has, not, has vanished, they want it restored. They want the glory of God on the earth. Watch Solomon, watch David, watch Jesus Christ, watch all of them. They bring the glory. Fire falls on the altar. The presence of God comes back. In Solomon's time, he said the priest could not stand to minister. So, anybody that has that Davidic thing becomes a person after God's heart, after his presence. After his presence. Make that one, David said, this one thing will I seek. This will I seek above everything. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord, that I may acquire in his temple. He said, in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. That's his glory. He will set me high above my enemies. This one thing will I see. Everyone say, this is my greatest desire. Say, this is my greatest To be a man of his presence. To see God glorified on the earth. To see his glory revealed on the earth. If you don't know why Solomon spread that hand, when he finished like the fire came, he wasn't a prophet like Elijah. What is going on here? That's what runs him. She's not just building a physical building. He's seeking to see the house of God filled with his glory and to see nations, see his glory and fear him. Men of God's presence. Please write this down. Every David is a worshiper, whether he can sing or not. And every David is a man of God's presence. They are people of the secret place. Whether they join prayer department or not, they are people. Men of prayer, men of the secret place. That is their secret. Or oh, when I see Ben Dober, you see, every time I see me, I give him my. I say, David. Ah, and once you see that, dominion will be the next thing. You hear what Pastor Emma said? God said, I like this one. Not just I love David, he said, I like him. When they gave birth to Solomon, he sent a prophet. He said, Go, they didn't give him a name. I think he's Jedediah. You know what he means? Beloved of the. I like this boy. He said Solomon wrote uh, 3,000 songs. David at least 150. We read in Psalms. Solomon, 3,000. <laughs> Lift up your hand. Say, Lord, make me a worshiper. You see, everybody seeking God, wanting to get something. God is looking for some people. Who is he looking for? A worshiper. Who is he looking for? An intercessor. I sought for a man to stand in the gap. Who is he looking for? He said, a true worshiper worship the father in spirit and in truth for such the father seeketh. so god will bypass a thousand people looking for him to find the man he's looking for and the man he's looking for is a worshiper hey lift up here say lord i become that man you are looking for i'm not just seeking your hand i seek your face I'm not just seeking your hand, I seek your heart. My desire is to do your will. My desire is to see your, your purpose established on the earth. He said, I found David, my servant, a man after my heart. A man after my hand, not after my hand. Not after my hand. Not just somebody who wants to collect something from me. A man after my heart. Somebody that wants to please me. Somebody that wants to do my will. Lord, I come, as is written of me in the volume of the books. To do thy will, O God. For the love of my God is within my heart. A man after my heart. A man that fears me. A man that loves me. A man that reverences me. A man that wrote in his own book, Delight yourself in the Lord. Then he will give you the desires of your heart. A man that reverences me. Oh, cry out to him. I see that anointing coming on you. I see that mantle coming on you. Even as you are praying. There is a recruitment that is going on here this morning. There is a recruitment that is going on here this morning. There is impartation that is going on here this morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Give me a hand like yours, Lord. Give me a hand like yours. Make me like you. Teach me your ways that I might know you. Teach me your ways that I might please you. 
Teach me your ways, Lord. Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. Show me your glory. Open my eyes that I might know you. Open my eyes. You can sing it. I like yours. A heart like yours is my desire. A heart like yours is what I'm searching for. Full of compassion, nothing wrong with me. into this level establish this covenant lord with every word turn the heart of the rebellious back to you circumcise our heart help them to know that this is not the work of a man that is not what we did by ourselves help them to see lord help them to see give everyone understanding circumcise that and make a revelation of yourself to them that sons should be established as an ordinance in this house and in this place in Port Harcourt and the whole of Dominion City houses all over the world and now that your purpose can now be fulfilled like you said to Abraham he said I know him that he will command his children after him to walk in the ways of the Lord so that the Lord will establish for Abraham the covenant that he has promised the covenant that he has made let them realize that you need the sun to the sons to align so that heaven can establish for them 
what God has planned. Give each one of them a walking revelation of this truth. Let it not just be because they heard it. Let it be a, a knowing, a walking knowledge in their life. Let it be part of their DNA. Now, let that hand of friendship, the hand of God be established, be extended to every one of them, Lord. May their destinies be established. May their ministries be established. Now let your covenant be established for them. May there be no man weak among us anymore. May there be no man in whose life your glory is not reflected. Banish from their lives all the sins and abominations that are blocking your face. Establish the law of righteousness in their hearts, the law of truth and integrity, the law of faithfulness and loyalty. Raise each one of these to be men that fear you, men that love you, men that obey you, men that love each other, love the brotherhood, men that honor us because they know we are for you, they know. They know. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you, Lord. And I bless your inheritance. I bless every one of them. The enemy cannot exert upon them or outwit them anymore. I give a command to the city of Potakot and the whole of South South and Nigeria to the north, to the east, to the west. To the south, everyone that is called by her name, everyone that is part of this mandate, I command them to hear the voice and come and join that army. Let a movement begin all over the place. Anyone that was part of this and the enemy derailed him, but he is still a child of destiny, he's part of this. We call him back, we call him back. Male or female, we call them back in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the waves, even the heavens, to hear the voice of God. I command the earth to hear the voice of God. I command the land of Bodako to yield increase. I command the atmosphere to be reordered. The abundance of rain will begin in this land. People will know that this is a mandate sent by God. They will come in their droves, in their thousands, from far. They come and camp under this canopy. And be taught the ordinances of God. Father, even strangers, because they heard of your fame, that will come. Then your hand of blessing also reach them. So that they will know that you are a living God. And they will learn to fear you. Thank you, Lord. Raise kings. Raise priests. After the order of making like righteous priests. Raise kings with the heart of David. Raise Josephs. Even pick some of our people and teach them the mysteries of the prophetic. Please hear me, Lord. Give me your heart. Extend all that hand of blessing to all my friends here and all the ones in Dubai and all the other ones that level with us. It's one family, Lord. It's one family. It's one kingdom. You are a king. You are a lord. You are a master. May your purpose in this last days be established. May your will be done without fail. May your counsel be implemented to precision. Raise us covenant partners, covenant friends. Those that fear you, that know you, those that keep covenant. We can move as an army, one army. Restore back the kingdom to our king. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. Everybody ask God, give me a revelation of covenant, a working revelation of covenant. It's on covenant, everything is built in the kingdom. His covenant is foundation. Everything is built on it. Give me a revelation of it.
Nothing is constant without it. Nothing has foundation without it. Nothing. Everything is built on it. God is built on casual relationships or associations. He builds on covenant. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. This is the end of this part. Please play the next tape in the series.